Great. I, I, I also want to thank Elizabeth. We, there's not another person I can think of at the moment, at least in DHS, that gets the kind of scrutiny and assistance and analysis um, that we have from advocates on our kids first. And it just really makes a huge difference for us. It helps inform what we do. And of course, it's the time to advocate. And they do, and they do budget projections for us. Some of the work that we've come to do on ourselves is something we just can't get through. So it really is a partnership. That, I just want to personally appreciate thank you for the work you do in this. Uh, and we should all be thankful for advocates. Uh, as you know, we launched our Kids First in uh, 1997. It was one of the first programs like it in the country. And frankly, with a lot of people in this room, it really took off uh, because of your work. Uh, it has reached a, just a ton of kids, uh, but we have never reached as many as we'd like to. And we realized all along, as Elizabeth said, that it's not just about getting the kids signed up to the program, but once they're signed up, making sure they have the right mix of services because kids have different needs. And I just want to take a few minutes and talk about some of the things, in addition to what Elizabeth mentioned, some of the things we've got going on, both on the outreach side uh, and on the kind of service array side. Uh, probably the biggest initiative we have going on that Elizabeth mentioned, uh, that's actually run by Joan Jones and her staff, and the Division of County Operations that does all our eligibility for Medicaid and other programs is what we call Access Arkansas, which is our effort to put our applications online so that people can apply online and not have to come to the county offices. We have 1.4 million people in Arkansas that we served last year, not counting by twice. Half the people in Arkansas got something from us or paid for by us through one of the providers. And an awful lot of those people have had to come through the county office door or at a minimum send us something by mail or do something with my phone. We're really trying to automate that as much as possible uh, because it's much easier for the clients. Obviously, they don't have to take time off from work uh, <coughs> for them to come in. It's easier for our staff because the degree the clients put in the information, it's probably more accurate to start with. It frees up our time. Uh, and by automating that material, frankly, uh, or auto automating our systems, it allows us to really move the workload around depending on where we've got staff to help. And that's a huge difference. The, the million four that we serve is up from about 700,000 10 years ago. And Joni has about the same number of staff processing those applications. So it's just a huge task. Uh, we are really excited. Uh, we're also excited about uh, the fact that by working more online, and frankly, we're now kind of looking at the social media aspects, YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and all those things I don't know how to use. <laughs> but really trying to connect better uh, Kristen, she has talked about how she may have not gotten the mail from us, uh, but you know, we'd love to be able to have contact with folks like her. In fact, one of the things we're doing with Access Arkansas is creating kind of a personal web page at DHS so that once you apply, you can go to your own personal web page and see where your application is, uh, and hopefully we can communicate with you. It's time for you to renew this, or as we move in the future, we hope to even send out good health information if someone has diabetes, to send them information about what they might want to do. There just seem to be lots of opportunities, short of being intrusive, which we don't want to do, uh, to share information with people and get information from clients about what we could be doing better. So this Access Arkansas for us is just a huge initiative. Uh, it, we have not publicly launched it, and yet we have joined thousands of people already who are just finding it on our website. Uh, a lot of people don't have computers, but when they know you can do something online, they find a way to get to one. They get to the library, they get to friends, family members. Uh, people, people find a way to do this through school. Uh, they find a way to get online. Uh, and we're thinking within five years or so, we may have as many as 75% of our people coming to us online uh, rather than uh, in person, which would be terrific for us. It will also probably be easier for us to keep track of them. If they got an email address, even if you know, they, they move, they may keep their email address. Uh, or keep their phone number and we can text to them and say, hey, we can't find you. Or, you know, did you know it's time to come in? So we're very excited about that. We also have two initiatives going on around outreach this year, both of which we think have been very successful. First is the, the coaches campaign, uh, which is centered around Coach Bob Petrino of the Razorbacks and was initially targeted really to other coaches and leaders in sports, thinking that through, through him talking about our kids first, uh, it would cause them to get their charges, the kids who they're responsible for, to sign up. I think what it's actually done, as a sports fan myself, when he talks, all of us who are sports fans, oh, that's why Trina, Trina, we better listen up. And I think it's actually having a much wider impact than we thought it would have. Uh, the other thing that seems to be very successful is we're partnering with advocates, with the libraries, and Radio Disney 
uh, to reach out to kids. We've reached over a thousand kids and families through local libraries. Radio Disney comes out and puts on these, and they're very good at putting on these performances. And with, as a parent of four, two fourth graders, I know that's very attractive. Uh, we had lots of over a thousand families this summer through the libraries, and we're now going to be targeting the school year, uh, schools that have a very high rate of free and reduced lunch programs to try to reach more of these kids, hopefully thousands more. So both of those programs, the Coaches Campaign and the Radio Disney Campaign, uh, seem to be very successful. Then on the uh, kind of access to services or the service race side, there's a number of things that we're doing. Uh, probably the, the biggest that's been going on a while, and hopefully most of you are aware of, is our system of care. The work that's been going on uh, to create a better system for kids with serious emotional disturbance. Jane Huddleston and Don Zinkis and others have been working very hard on that. Really, it's been going on for three or four years, but just in this last year, it has really kind of hit the front lines. Uh, and we now have uh, one of the four components called the RAP plan. That's now available in every catchment area, every mental health catchment area for kids. Uh, we also have, just as of this month, uh, we now have the youth outcome questionnaire, the YOQ available. And what that does is a standardized assessment so that any kid coming to the system gets a standardized assessment, hopefully a better treatment plan than they would have. And probably most importantly, is we're able to then track whether the services that they're getting are effective. So we're very excited about that. The system here really is now, after lots of planning, uh, it really is starting to show some, some real fruit, and we're excited about that. We also have, through our Division of Early Child Care, Division of Child Care and Early Childhood Education, the ABCD program, which is, I know it's going to forget the first one. Wait a minute. Assuring, I almost want to say architect, Assuring Better Child Health and Development. And what that is, is really trying to tie physicians, the primary care physicians, with other providers to help identify those kids who have a risk of having natural delays so that those kids can get services early, get referred where they need to. Uh, that really is consistent with a lot of work we're trying to do in the department to identify issues early, do early intervention and prevention. Uh, it's good for our budget. It's obviously good for these kids and their families to serve them early and not wait for the deep end uh, when it's, they often have to be taken away from their families. Uh, we also have, through the Division of Child Care, the Better Beginnings program that will launch next month. I think October 25th is our launch, and you'll probably get something about that. Better Beginnings is really, it's, it's the uh, quality rating improvement system in Arkansas, but it's really focused on working with families to understand the value of quality early childhood and then having an online system where you can go look in your particular community and see which providers have that have met the voluntary standards to be a quality provider. Uh, and we think, again, it's just one more step to try to improve the, the quality of services that are available. Uh, we have also this year have, now have statewide intensive family services in our child welfare program. Intensive family services is an effort for families who are at risk, at imminent risk of being broken up, us having to take one of the children, or all the children, um, providing them intensive counseling and skill building and referrals and training so that they can hopefully keep that, we can help keep that family together and intact. Uh, and that's what we've had kind of pieces of it available around the state, but now we have really launched a statewide program. And we think that'll make a big difference for an awful lot of families and cause a lot of kids to not come into our care uh, and instead be in a more stable family setting. Uh, and finally, uh, we have not publicly announced this, but we have recently decided to implement Medicaid substance abuse treatment for pregnant and postpartum women, women and for kids. Uh, you'll recall it was one of these. It was in the government's health care initiative. Uh, it was one of those items of French we just weren't sure that we could afford uh, to implement at the time because we had to say, and let me just mentioned, which I haven't, probably the greatest thing that's going on is unlike the first saver in the state, we've not had to cut services in Medicaid. So we're very pleased about that. And we're watching, we're not out of the woods on Medicaid, but right now we haven't had to cut anything and don't plan to make any reductions. But anyway, back to substance abuse. Um, we, we didn't think we could afford to implement it until we really started doing the research around the country and are really convinced that it actually is cost effective for us to have substance abuse treatment because it reduces your costs, such as emergency room costs, so many other costs. If you look at our child welfare system, our juvenile justice system, large numbers of the kids in those systems and the parents have substance abuse issues. And we think it will actually be by savings and a worst uh, budget neutral for the state to go ahead and implement that program. We're now working on the rules. We'll be talking to providers, doing the training, et cetera. Uh, it'll probably be spring of this year when we implement it. Uh, and we hope to announce it pretty soon, but we kind of want to get all the ducks in a row. But I figured we'd go ahead and tell you all. So we're, we're very excited about launching that program. We wanted to do it for a long time. 
Uh, and we also want to do the ARCA's expansion of 250%. Again, we just have to make sure that our budget can handle it. We don't want to find ourselves cutting some other critical program in order to do an expansion. Uh, but it's still on our radar. I know it's still on the governor's radar. We've just got to be able to kind of see our way to it. In the meantime, we're going to keep trying to do outreach to the thousands of kids who are, still, who are currently eligible and have, we have yet been able to get signed up. Uh, and we're going to continue to try to improve this array of services that we have. Uh, it's, again, I just I want to thank advocates uh, for their work on the outreach, for their passion on behalf of these kids. And it really is a great partnership with us. So thank you all. And thanks for putting on this conference.